there's a good possibility that a deal can be made and that he is open to that. He is open to that. But having said that, some caveats, as always, certain conditions have to be met with respect to uh, fairness and reciprocity. That was top White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow talking about the possibility of the U.S. making a trade deal with China. The deal now closer to reality after the Trump administration yesterday announced that it will temporarily hold off on a new round of tariffs aimed at Beijing. Hours after President Trump and Chinese leader Xi Jinping met face to face at the G20 summit in Argentina last night. The 90-day ceasefire comes after months of escalating trade tensions that have rattled financial markets. Joining me right now is Pennsylvania Democratic Congressman Matt Cartwright, who is the newly elected co-chairman of the House Democratic Policy and Communications Committee. He also sits on the House Oversight and Appropriations Committee. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello, Maria. How are you? I want to get your take on what took place in Argentina and certainly the USMCA deal as well. All very important issues for your constituents in Pennsylvania, not to mention the entire country. But first, on this day, as we remember, George H.W. Bush, I know that you have fond memories as well. Uh, absolutely. We are, we are in mourning as a nation. Uh, whether you're Republican or Democrat, uh, we are are hard hit by the loss of uh, President George H.W. Bush. Um, I think it's going viral. His note to uh, Bill Clinton uh, on the succession of power uh, when uh, President Clinton took over, uh, saying, I'm, ro I'm rooting hard for you. I mean, that is just exactly who President Bush was. And I appreciated the comments that you had uh, Vice President Quayle at the top of the hour. Uh, the way he worked in a bipartisan way, he worked with the Democratic Congress. Uh, they worked to negotiate things, to move the nation forward, um, and in a low-key way, in a, in a kind way. Uh, I'd like to see us all take a lesson from that, uh, because we have a lot of work to do in this country, and, and uh, taking the cue from uh, President, uh, late President Bush uh, wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, I think that's a great sentiment, and most people would like to see the work get done and not the constant fighting back and forth. Let's talk about the work that needs to be done, Congressman, because this weekend the president signed this new USMCA deal replacing NAFTA uh, with the leaders of Mexico and, and, uh, and Canada. Are you expecting you and your colleagues to delay the ratification of that deal come the new Congress? Well, here's the problem, Maria. Uh, we're, we're all, of course, we're still getting used to uh, President Trump's negotiating style, and 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 maybe the the delay with the China deal, uh, the the uh, China tariffs, uh, is a good example of, um, you know, he he has his own negotiating style. What we were hoping with the um, uh, the U.S. Mexico Canada trade deal was that. Um, there would be more improvement to it, that, that, that maybe we would step back from the deal and, and get a better deal. Because um, the, the protections for labor and the environment are, are not there. I mean, we're, uh, they're limited, for example, to uh, auto, uh, auto manufacturing and related industries. Well, that, that does, uh, you know, raising labor standards in Mexico uh, with the auto industry does make sense. But what we're looking for is a broadening of that. I mean, we could use that as a pilot program, I suppose, but that can't be the end of the deal. We've got to improve on that. And I think that's what Democrats are looking for, because in places like northeastern Pennsylvania, where I'm talking to you from, we got hit hard by NAFTA. NAFTA bestowed many benefits on our nation. But it bestowed them unevenly, and it really hit the manufacturing sector in my part of the, the country very hard. And a lot of people lost their jobs, and they saw those jobs go to Mexico for one reason only, yeah. because you could get away with paying Mexican manufacturing employees $2 an hour, uh, as opposed to the 15 at the time or more uh, in the United States. So we're looking for improvement on that deal. I don't want that to be the end of the story uh, where it ended up right now. So are, is it better than to just use the, the current NAFTA in place? Is that a better situation than actually moving to USMCA? No, no. And President Trump promised that in his campaigning, that, that he, would, uh, he would ditch 
NAFTA, AND HE WOULD MAKE IT BETTER AND MAKE IT STRONGER FOR AMERICAN MANUFACTURING WORKERS. Um, you know, the, the current deal is, is, a, is a step in that direction, but it's got to be made a lot stronger. And what I'm looking for is President Trump to indicate that this is not the end of the line. This is not the deal that he's going to be satisfied with. We want to see President Trump sharpen his pen, pencil and, and do a better job at, at helping American manufacturing workers. Yeah. Uh, the current deal doesn't do that. A couple of the changes, country of origin rules, automobiles must have 75% of their components manufactured in Mexico, the U.S., or Canada to get the free trade zero tariff status. 40 to 45% of automobile parts have to be made by workers who earn at least $16 an hour by 2023. And U.S. farmers are getting more access to the Canadian dairy market. The U.S. got Canada to open up its dairy market uh, to U.S. farmers. Intellectual property and digital trade, the deal extends the terms of copyright to 70 years beyond the life of the author. So very specifically, what other industries do you want to see getting exposure in this deal away from the auto sector then? Oh, uh, absolutely. I love all those things, Maria. Don't make any mistake about it. I mean, uh, uh, doing that for uh, wages for Mexican workers means uh, that fewer jobs will be exported to Mexico just to get the cheaper wage rates. Um, but absolutely every American manufacturing industry should be subject to that. Uh, we, we, uh, I don't mind them trying a, a, a pilot program, a test program, uh, limited to the auto manufacturing sector, but manufacturing in this country, uh, it's not going to come as a surprise to you, Maria, that manufacturing is not only about automobiles in this country, it's every kind of thing that's ever made in the, in the United States. Uh, that's what we're looking for, because this is the kind of industry, for example, here in northeastern Pennsylvania, it was television picture tubes. Mm -hmm. We lost a, a very important factory north of Scranton to Mexico, and it was because of the low wage rates they could get in Mexico in the mid-90s after NAFTA went into effect. Um, and so, uh, TV manufacturing ha is not affected at all by this current deal. Everything that's made in this country ought to be subject to, how, to how uh, long, how uh, long a better are you willing, deal. How long are you going to be willing to stretch this out before voting for this deal? I mean, the, the, the whole uncertainty of it on whether or not the Congress votes for ratification of USMCA will, will certainly unnerve markets. Well, um, a, a lot of things will unnerve markets. What I'm really worried about with the markets uh, are that uh, this tax uh, sugar high that we're experiencing now uh, is going gonna, is gonna to dissipate. And, and in fact, uh, a terrific economist, uh, Ian Shepardson, has said this. It's a sugar high, and what he's worried about is that uh, we're, we're going to head into recession. I think uh, uh, Vice President Quayle mentioned that at the top of the hour. Right. Look, if we get, head into a recession in this country, uh, that hurts everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, th this is a, a bigger danger to American workers than anything happening with the borders or immigration. If we yeah. head into a recession, that means your job may be at risk. And a recession doesn't help anybody. Democrats are not rooting for a recession. We're rooting for success in this country, just the way uh, President uh, Bush was rooting for the success of Bill Clinton so, when he took so over the question, as president So the question of this becomes, nation. are you going to move to raise taxes, and does that bring on a recession? Welcome back, and I'm back with Pennsylvania Democratic Congressman Matt Cartwright, who is the newly elected co-chairman of the House Democratic Policy and Communications Committee. And Congressman, just to close the loop on USMCA, am I right to assume you will not vote for this deal the way it is right now? No, unless it's made clear somehow that this is only a temporary uh, position, that we're going to move on to broadening its effect to the entire manufacturing sector in this country. Now, last night, the president uh, announced that there's a ceasefire uh, um, uh, with these tariffs that he was planning on putting on China because of the dinner that he and President Xi had in Argentina. Your reaction to what was done last night in Argentina regarding China, is this going to be... Uh, a big positive in your view? Oh, I think this is classic uh, uh, Donald Trump negotiating. Um, stepping back from deals, uh, not being that interested in this or that, 
Um, it, it's a, uh, he, he's been an effective negotiator in, in the sense that uh, he's not wedded to a deal, and he can step away from a position uh, at any moment. Um, and I think this is classic, what he has done to extend that by 90 days. Uh, let's, let's follow that out. Let's see how it works. Here's the, here's the issue, Maria. We're talking about what government can do to make sure the economy is rolling along and, and helping people stay in their jobs and get better jobs right. and better wages. And you, you can do things like tax cuts, and we talked about that. You can do things like lower the interest rate. Uh, and you can do things like infrastructure spending. Right. Well, tax cuts, as, as I mentioned, uh, the economist uh, Ian Shepardson said, look, that, that may be a sugar high that will be ending, and we have to worry about that. Uh, things like lowering the interest rate, we have to stop depending on monetary policy to, as an economic stimulus because you know who that hurts? Right. That hurts seniors when they, when they only get... Yeah, one no, or two percent in the savings colleagues... account because interest rates are so low. Uh, what what I want to see is infrastructure spending, and we have to do this. You know, we talked about President uh, George H. W. Bush. Uh, my father was a huge admirer of his. Why? Yeah. Because they were both in the greatest generation. The greatest generation after they came back from the war, they built us an infrastructure in yeah. this country well, you can talk about that we should be proud spending, of. It made our, also, our made our whole nation competitive. Roads, bridges. We have to repair the money, these things. We have to do a responsible job where do you get of the money proper with the, husbandry with... of this wonderful portfolio of assets, right. public assets, that have been passed down to us. Congressman, are you recommending raising taxes on the rich? as a way to pay for infrastructure? That's a separate question. We have, to, we have to pass a transportation and infrastructure bill, and we have to get it. We have to have hearings on it. But the point is, uh, uh, the Republican Congress didn't do it. Where do you get the money? I'm just trying to understand where you get and, the money for the infrastructure package. And that was something that was promised. I didn't understand why they couldn't get a T&I bill through the House and onto President Trump's desk. We as the Democrats, we will do that because we promised to do right. that. And, and if President Trump takes credit for uh, infrastructure uh, repair spending, Spending, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, it's the right thing for America. Congressman, we, we will be watching the developments. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Congressman Cartwright there joining us.